Hey guys, in this video, we're going to talk about local adjustments in Photoshop to give you more control over your post processing. So more than any other thing on my videos, I'm constantly asked for more post processing videos. And I want to give a little shameless plug at the beginning of this. I offer Skype sessions where we can work one on one and we can work on your images and you can learn whatever it is that you want to learn. But today I want to talk about getting you to think uh, in terms of making local adjustments when you're working in Photoshop's with your uh, Photoshop with your images. So Lightroom is great. Don't get me wrong. I use it for 90% of my images, mostly my portrait photography. But when it comes to landscape photography, I much prefer using Photoshop. And the reason for that is that I have so much more control. I like to work locally, meaning that I like to make adjustments to only parts of my image rather than big sweeping adjustments that that affect my entire image. So I want to show you what I'm talking about. OK, so I've got several examples here. The first one is this shot from the ice cave in Iceland. I really would like to add more contrast to this, the the ice here. If I was just to create a new levels adjustment and add that contrast, that, I, that really makes this part of the eyes look great, but we're blowing out our highlights here. Our shadows are getting much, much too dark. Um, it just doesn't look great everywhere, but it does look great where I'm wanting to add the contrast. So the nice thing about working with layers in Photoshop is that you can affect only the parts of your image that you want to affect. So using a layer mask, what I'm going to do is I'm going to invert it by going Control I, and now you can see our layer mask is dark here and it's affecting none of the image. Now I can take and take my paintbrush, increase my opacity to say 70 something percent, and then just paint in that effect where I was liking what it was doing. And I can lower my opacity here and add a little bit to it in these areas here and avoid the areas where it, I it was giving me a negative result. So now I'm able to add that contrast and add a ton of uh, pop and saturation to the parts of the image I wanted to while avoiding the areas that I didn't want it to hit. Now, the reason you could kind of do this in Lightroom, but the thing is you can uh, further refine your your adjustment by making selections. So if I was to make a selection of just the ceiling with my quick selection tool here, just make a quick grab of the ceiling, holding down alt, I'll unselect some of that. Now I can use this as a stencil when I'm doing my, when I'm adding this adjustment here. So when I paint this adjustment down with the color white on my layer mask, it's going to stop at that edge. You couldn't do that in Lightroom. I mean, you kind of could, but you pretty much couldn't. Um, being able to make selections like this is really, really nice. Um, another time that I really like to work locally, and the whole the whole theme for this is working locally, is let's say I have this wave shot here. Let's move that guy there. I have this wave shot here, and I really want to add, um, emphasize the texture and the sharpness of this particular wave. Um, one of the things that I'd like to do is add a bunch of structure and detail, um, but I don't want to do it everywhere. I don't want to do it to the clouds in the background. I don't want to do it to the sky or the out of focus areas. That's only going to increase noise. So what I can do is let's say, um, let's do a high pass filter. I'll stamp down my layer by going control shift alt E and it gives me this, which is just another an, our current state of our image on its own layer. Now I'll go up to filter, other, high pass. And this is just a, a type of sharpening. And it's a type of sharpening that I actually really prefer. I'll hit OK. And then I will change the blend mode of this gray layer that it gives us to linear light. And what that does, if we zoom in here, if I turn this off and on, you can see it's just it's just a method of sharpening, but it's a really effective way of sharpening. I really, really like this. But the unfortunate thing is that it's doing it to our sky and giving us this noise. 
So what I'm going to do is create a layer mask. I'm going to hold down alt while clicking on new layer mask and that's going to give me a black layer mask to start off with. And now I can just paint in this effect where we really want it rather than um, have it affect the whole thing. So again, 70 something percent. I'm just going to paint white onto our layer mask. And if I zoom way in, you can see that we're just adding it where we want it. And in this way, you can really direct the eye of your viewer to your main subject in a photo because eyes are going to be directed or drawn to a couple things, highlights and texture and detail. And if the main subject of your photo either has is the brightest part of your photo or has highlights or the brightest parts of your shot, it's going to make the eye bam, go right to it. And that's a good thing. So with sharpening, it works great like this. So another way that I work locally is by exposure blending. You can kind of loosely call it working locally, but exposure blending is really nice because you can add tons and tons of contrast to a sky. For example, straight out of camera, this shot was looking very much like this, very low contrast, but there's obviously a rainbow there. I would like that rainbow to pop. The only way you can make that rainbow pop is by adding a ton of contrast like I have in this particular shot. So all this is, is I created a copy, a virtual copy in Lightroom of this shot. And then in this version of this frame, I added a whole bunch of contrast to bring that rainbow out. But you can see what it does to the foreground. It makes it very oversaturated and blocked up and yucky. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the sky from this darker frame and blend it with the foreground from this frame. And while we're at it, I'm going to blend that with this frame where I like the water action better. And again, I can use, I can do all of this using layer mask. So the first thing I'm going to do is blend in the part of the water that I like the best. I'm going to go to 100%, use the color black, and just blend in the water from this frame here and try to make the transition pretty seamless here. Something like this. Okay. And now we're going to go up, go up to this layer here. I'm going to start off with a black layer. So I'm going to hold down alt, click on new layer mask. And now I'm going to just paint in with the color white, paint in this saturated sky, the saturated high contrast sky. Now the trick is always going to be around this horizon line. There's a bunch of different ways you can do it. The way that I normally prefer to do is using layer a luminosity mask. That's premium content. So if you want to learn that, you can just uh, do a Skype session with me. But another way that you can do this is basically make a selection of your sky. Grab the quick select tool. Select your sky here. This is not the most ideal way of doing it, but it will work. Go to our select and mask, paint over our ragged edges. We're going to want to bring this up here. Something like that. Hit OK. And now we have the sky selected and we're using that selection as a stencil so we don't over go over our foreground. I'm going to hit Control H to hide that. Go back to our layer mask, make sure I've got a paintbrush selected, and then with a lower opacity, I'm just going to feather, feather this sky down towards our horizon line. Something like this. With that, that darker version of the sky, we've really made that rainbow pop. And yeah, it still looks natural because our foreground hasn't become all weird and over contrasty. That's how you can have a dark shot, but still maintain details in your shadows because you're not adding all that contrast to block up your sky. So you might be saying to yourself, look at these huge water spots. Well, those are really easy to get rid of. We'll go over to our patch tool here. 
I'll select a water spot. I'll drag that off to the side, check our result, do that a couple times. I'll do that for this one here. Do that for this here. And voila, there, our water spots are gone. And now I would go through and I would do the, all the same things that we did in the previous ones where maybe I want to add some contrast. I could add, add contrast to the sky. I would sharpen only my foreground. I could add highlights only to my foreground. For example, let's create a new levels adjustment. And now I'm going to be looking at the water and the foreground. I just want to kind of brighten it up by sliding this over here. So I'm liking the effect that that has here. And now I'm going to invert that and just paint that effect in where I liked it the most. So using an opacity of 66% or so, I'm going to paint that into my shadow areas, paint that into the areas that I want the eye to go. And now I've added a little bit of foreground pop really quickly, really easily, just by using a local contrast adjustment. Okay, so hopefully this shows you the value in working locally in Photoshop. Local contrast, local sharpening, even local color adjustments where, say you want your sky to have a little bit more magenta, you do that locally, that way you're not affecting your whole image. Thank you guys so much, make sure you check out nickpagephotography.com for Skype tutorials, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.